Welcome to Vancouver Graveyard. Today is part two of our Heroes Tour. We're visiting six local cemeteries to remember and celebrate nine remarkable people. We're starting our tour at the beautiful Pacific Heritage Cemetery in Burnaby and the final resting place of the great Percy Williams. Born in Vancouver, Percy was a slight sprinter barely out of high school in 1928 when he competed at the Amsterdam Olympics. He shocked the world by becoming only the third person in history to win both the 100 and 200 meter races. He was dubbed the fastest man on earth. American humorist Will Rogers suggested annexing Canada just to get Percy on their team and General Douglas MacArthur said, Percy is the greatest sprinter the world has ever seen. A massive crowd attended his arrival back in Vancouver and the city presented him with this car. Percy is immortalized with this downtown statue outside of the BC Sports Hall of Fame. Percy Williams lived all his life in Vancouver. In 1982, he took his own life at age 74. At the scenic Mountain View Cemetery in Vancouver is the sprinter who beat Percy's 31-year-old records, Harry Jerome. In 1962, Harry became the only athlete to own both the 100-yard and 100-meter world records simultaneously, and he was the second Vancouverite to be called the fastest man on earth. This incredible photograph shows the two titans, Harry and Percy. During one race, Harry suffered a full quadricep tear. Vancouver surgeon Hector Gillespie, who was a huge fan of Harry's, performed a free operation. Harry surprised the world with a miraculous bronze medal two years later at the 1964 100-meter Olympic race. It remains the ultimate comeback in the history of track and field. Harry is immortalized with this impressive statue in Stanley Park. Tragically, just days after attending Percy Williams' funeral in 1982, Harry suffered a fatal seizure. He was 42 years old. Close by is another hero at Mountain View, Seraphim Fortes. Seraphim arrived here in 1885. He lived in a little shack at English Bay. As a volunteer lifeguard, he taught people to swim and saved hundreds from drowning. People nicknamed him Joe. Joe was the most loved man in the city until 1922, when he died from a stroke at 59. There was a record-breaking funeral procession with thousands of mourners bringing him here to his final resting place. His death especially saddened the children who saved all of their allowance money for five years. Their funds went toward this water fountain in Alexandra Park. The inscription says, little children loved him. In 1986, Seraphim Joe Fortes was named Citizen of the Century. His headstone says, official lifeguard and keeper of the beach. We're visiting two more heroes at the lovely Robinson Memorial Park Cemetery in Coquitlam. First is Greg Moore. When he was six years old, Greg started driving a go-kart around his father's car dealership lot. This stoked his passion for racing and he started competing at the age of 10. Greg also excelled at hockey, winning the provincial championship. He was twice named Maple Ridge Athlete of the Year. When he was 14, his father urged him to choose between ice hockey and racing and Greg chose racing. Greg competed 72 times with championship auto racing teams. He won five races and was on the podium 17 times. He was a highly respected competitor, an oval track specialist. On October 31st, 1999, Greg was racing at the California Speedway where he suffered a fatal accident. He was 24 years old. Greg Moore was posthumously inducted into the Canadian Motorsport and BC Sports Hall of Fame. His final resting place includes a memorial bench as well as a headstone. Close by is the final resting place of Emery Barnes. Emery was a football player with the BC Lions for three years in the 1960s. Concerned with community issues, he became a social worker. First elected to the provincial legislature in 1972, Emery was re-elected four times serving the province until 1996. One of the first black politicians elected to the legislature, Emery became the first black person to be speaker in any Canadian province. Throughout his life, Emery was passionate about social justice, human rights, and poverty. There is a refreshing park at Richards and Davy Street in downtown Vancouver named in his honour. Emery Barnes passed away in 
1998, he was 68 years old. We're visiting two heroes here at the peaceful Capilano View Cemetery in West Vancouver. First is Claude Detloff, who went by the nickname Det. Det was a talented photographer with the Vancouver Province newspaper. On October 1st, 1940, Det was covering an event in New Westminster. With war raging in Europe, a parade of local soldiers marched toward an outbound ship. Heartbroken, family members were walking alongside when a young lad yelled, Wait for me, Daddy! Det took this picture which ran in the paper the next day. It was picked up around the world. It is in Life Magazine's list of all-time best photos. Five years later, Det photographed the joyful reunion of Whitey Bernard and his dad Jack, who had survived the war. Today there is an impressive statue depicting Det's famous photo on the spot where he took it. Claude Detloff passed away in 1978 at 79 years old. He is interred here with his wife Lena. Close by Det is another news media legend, Jack Webster. Born in Scotland, Jack may be best remembered for his popular radio and television programs in which he liked to ask his guests tough questions. Viewers loved it when he held politicians accountable. His interviews with Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau are especially entertaining. Today, Pierre Trudeau, leader of the Liberal Party, former Prime Minister of Canada. Mr. Trudeau, is it not a fact, sir, with all due deference, humility and respect, that you are running for the prime ministership of this country in a most reluctant fashion, and that really you're just, if you win, you will become a pro tem caretaker until a successor is chosen. No, Jack, that's not true. Jack later joined the long running TV program Front Page Challenge as a permanent panelist. A member of the Canadian News Hall of Fame and recipient of the Order of Canada, Jack Webster passed away at 80 in 1999. His memorial stone includes his famous expression, reminding viewers of his show's start time. 9 a.m. precisely. North Vancouver's historic Burrard or Slaywatooth Cemetery is the final resting place of Chief Dan George. Born Geswanuth Slahoot in North Van, his name was changed to Dan George at residential school. After a variety of jobs, Dan became band chief of the Slaywatooth Nation in 1951. At age 60, Dan landed his first acting job on the TV show Caribou Country. His talents were remarkable, and 10 years later, he was in the major motion picture Little Big Man with Dustin Hoffman. This earned Dan an Academy Award nomination. My favorite Dan performance is in The Outlaw Josie Wales with Clint Eastwood. Howdy. Name's Josie Wales. I've heard of that name. Some said you'd be headed this way. And they said a man could get rich on reward money if he could kill you. Dan advocated for the environment and indigenous people throughout his life. His soliloquy Lament for Confederation delivered in 1967 continues to be relevant and remembered. Chief Dan George passed away in 1981 at 82 years old. His headstone says he soared like the eagle. Our final cemetery today is the Serene Victory Memorial Park in Surrey. Born Eric Edwards, Alberta Slim was a prairie hobo during the Depression. He was known to ride the railroads and play guitar on street corners. His trademark yodeling became a popular highlight on Saskatchewan radio in the 30s and 40s. He landed a contract with RCA Victor, and he recorded dozens of great songs, including my favorite, I Wanna Be a Cowboy. I had hay seed in my hair. I'm gonna be a cowboy and ride the prairie trail. Alberta's career eventually waned. He moved to Surrey and he was out of the spotlight for many years. Then in 1997, when he was 88 years old, organizers at the Vancouver Folk Festival called and invited him to perform. He was a sensation and it reignited his career. Alberta is memorialized at the Museum of Surrey with this great display. 
Alberta Slim continued to perform until he was 93. He passed away in 2005 at age 95. His memorial plaque says, I want to ride, ride, ride on the prairies and yodel my worries away. And that concludes part two of our Heroes Tour. In our next episode, we're going to visit some notorious scoundrels and movie stars who played villains. If there is a particular grave you'd like to see, please add a comment below. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, as my late grandpa used to say, be good to the other. <laughs>